Next question. Oh my. All right, here we go. The male hormone contraceptive pills, the birth control, have been developed for over 50 years. So it doesn't seem like they are. <laughs> if they've been in development for 50 years, it means that something's not going right. Clearly, they need to get... <laughs> I must keep quiet. Okay, the pill contains a substance called TU. And what does TU do? They tell you here, it inhibits the secretion of testosterone. Okay, now think about it. What is the function of testosterone in a male body? Testosterone is, uh, testosterone is what causes the production of sperm cells. Okay, that's number one. But testosterone is also the hormone responsible for the secondary male sexual characteristics. So the fact that men have a deeper voice, that they are more muscular, that they have uh, facial hair, um, all, those, all those secondary male sexual characteristics that a boy develops when he goes through puberty, well, it's because of testosterone. So I don't, I'm not quite sure how inhibiting testosterone, how that's going to impact everything else. But anyway, they say... There is, however, no product available as yet, mainly due to the side effects associated with the product. Well, yeah, anyway. An investigation is done to determine how TU affects male fertility. So this male fertility is going to be your dependent variable. Okay, variable. All right, now the procedure was as follows. They use 308 healthy male volunteers. Okay, so this here is going to talk to the reliability of the, of the investigation. Remember, whenever they ask you about investigations, they could ask you what factors uh, make this investigation reliable. What factors are talk to the validity of the experiment. So that's why I'm going to go through all of this with you. Reliability will mean the more candidates you have or your greatest, a bigger sample size, the more often it is done. So if that investigation is repeated to see if the results are the same and then obtaining an average of everything. Okay, so um, we had 308 healthy male volunteers. A sperm count for each volunteer was done initially. That's going to give them a baseline. Okay, so they know how, how many sperm they normally produce. Each volunteer was given 500 milligrams of TU monthly over a period of 12 months. Nice long time, so that talks to reliability. During the period of the investigation, the volunteers were asked to wear loose-fitting trousers and underwear, okay, made of the same light fabric, so it's nice and breathable and airy. A sperm count was done weekly, hmm, that's good, over a period of 24 months. In this case, your independent variable is going to be time. Okay, so the average, good, talks again to variability, uh, to reliability. Um, the sperm count was calculated per volunteer. Okay, oh, by the way, the fact that they were all given the same amount here talks to the validity. Okay. And the fact that they were all healthy males, etc. All right, now sperm count refers to the total number of healthy sperm cells per milliliter in semen, and, is in, and that indicates male fertility. Remember, semen is a combination of the fluids from the two corpus glands, from the two seminal vesicles, and from the prostate gland, plus the sperm cells. Okay, so here we go. Right. Um, identified, we already said the dependent variable was going to be male fertility. Because that's what you're checking. Okay, male fertility. State how the dependent variable was measured. Well, <laughs> it was measured by measuring the sperm count. I mean, you're checking male fertility. Surely they tell you it's the sperm count that makes a male fertile or infertile. If he's got lots of sperm cells, then, then he's fertile. If he has very few, then, well, then there's a big problem. Okay, so name two other factors 
that should be considered when selecting volunteers. Okay, so let's see what factors. They want two other. So they say here yeah, they have 308 healthy male volunteers. Okay, so what would we look at other than them being healthy? Um, we'd look at the age. We'd look at the age of the, of the candidates. We'd look at um, their diet. I mean, if they're eating unhealthy food, I'm not sure how they'd be healthy, but yeah, we want them to eat a good diet. We'd look at uh, the exercise. Exercise um, levels, I suppose. So do they do a lot of exercise or less exercise? Um, we'd look at, or you could say lifestyle. And lifestyle would also probably include the amount of stress that they have in their lives. Because remember, somebody who's under a lot of stress is also, that's also going to impact sperm count. So I would say the best one here is age, age and diet and exercise levels. Lifestyle, definitely a player as well. Okay, explain how TU reduces fertility. Okay, so let's just go back here. They actually tell you here. It says, the pills contain a substance called TU, which inhibits secretion of testosterone. So, how do we answer that? I mean, think about it. They tell you here. How does it do it? Well, TU, sorry, capital, TU inhibits the secretion of testosterone testosterone and therefore um, no sperm cells will be produced. Why? Because that's what testosterone's job is. It's to stimulate the production of sperm cells. Well, if you don't have testosterone, you're not going to produce the sperm cells. You could also have said no spermatogenesis will occur or take place. Okay, no spermatogenesis literally means no sperm cells will be formed. Okay, then explain why wearing tight-fitting trousers will decrease male fertility. Okay. What is the job of the scrotum? It's to be able to regulate the temperature of the testes. Why? The optimum temperature for sperm production is 35 degrees Celsius. So how do we answer this? We say this, okay? Tight fitting, tight fitting trousers um, prevents the scrotum from regulating the temperature, I'm sorry, temp of the testes. Okay. Therefore, testes are at a higher temperature than 35 degrees, so a higher temp temp than 35 degrees Celsius and therefore will cause a decrease in sperm cell production. Because those tight-fitting trousers are not going to allow the, test, uh, the, the, the scrotum to move down and up. They're going to be squished up. The testes are going to be squished up against the body. So the temperature is going to be higher than it's supposed to be. So you're just messing your body up. You should, all, you should never wear, guys should never ever wear tr tight trousers. Okay, so just one reason <coughs> why doing a sperm count for an additional 12 months after stopping to use. So now let's just go back. Okay, they said here, if I recall, during the period of the domestic, oh, okay, so they did it for 12 months. And then a sperm count was done weekly for over 24 months. 
Now, why did they carry on for that extra 12 months? Well, obviously, to see if stopping the TU um, doesn't impact on sperm production going forward. I mean, that's what common sense would tell me, even if I don't know how TU works. So, one reason for doing the sperm count for an additional 12 months to see whether TU um, was still effective um, after 12 months and whether the sperm count returned to normal after um, uh, the treatment was stopped. Okay, now think about this. If a chap was, was to, to, take, uh, to take this TU medication, okay, because he didn't want offspring, he didn't want children. Okay, now he comes along and he meets a really amazing person and he now wants kids. He wants to know that if he stops using the TU, that his sperm count will go back to normal and he'll be able to have a child. So that's why this is very important, okay? So it's to see whether that TU was still effective after 12 months and whether the sperm count returned to normal. And I think that is probably the most important aspect here. Okay, then the contraceptive options currently available for men are limited to condoms and a vasectomy. Now, a vasectomy involves the cutting and tying off of the vas deferences. Now, guys, think about this. What does the vas deferens do? It transfers sperm cells from the epididymis, where they are stored while they mature, okay, through to the urethras when they are ejaculated. Okay, so here this, this answer is actually a giveaway to marks because you just say that no sperm cells are transported from the EP, I love this word because it's got so many EEE -E -E sounds, epididymis, lots of eyes as well, epididymis to the urethra. Okay, um, so what's the result? Semen, which is that mixed fluid, the semen will not contain sperm cells when ejaculation occurs. And that is also why guys who've had a vasectomy actually still ejaculate a fluid because they're still ejaculating the, the semen part without the sperm cells.